Hey there and welcome to another Elite Code problem. So today we're going to be doing problem number 417, Pacific Atlantic Water Flow. It's on the Blind 75 problems um, on Elite Code, and I think it's a really good problem. It's one of my favorite ones on there. So let's read it. We have an M by N rectangular island that borders both the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. The Pacific Ocean touches the island's left and top edges from the picture, and the Atlantic touches the right and bottom. And we're given this matrix, we're given heights, and the way it works is the island receives rain, and water can flow from cells with a high number to cells with a low number. And we want to return every single cell from which water can flow to both the Atlantic and Pacific oceans. So water can flow from a cell to another cell of equal or lesser value. So for example, for this cell 5, we can see that it can clearly go to the Pacific Ocean because it'll go down, down, and there and there's other paths, cell four and so on. But like this cell three can't go to the Pacific because this whole area is can't be crossed because all these numbers are bigger than three. And so you can see like all these numbers can't get to the Pacific Ocean and all these numbers can't get to the Atlantic Ocean. So we can kind of figure out that we do have like a graph problem and we are gonna to wanna to use some kind of depth for search or a breadth for search for this problem. But the trick to this problem is figuring out that while we could figure out if water can go from here to the Pacific and the Atlantic, the easier thing to do is actually to figure out to have the Pacific as a starting point and then the Atlantic as a starting point. And then that way we could check, okay, let's just say this Pacific Ocean, so let's just draw this. So we have Pacific, Let's just say this is P, this is P, A, A, and we have some nodes, right? So instead of what we can do is we can actually figure out, okay, well, for the Pacific Ocean, we know that all of these nodes, the water from the Pacific Ocean can clearly go to those, right? Because they're right on the border and all of these nodes. And so we can just do a depth first search for, for all of these nodes and all of these nodes and figure out, okay, from these nodes, water can go to the Pacific and instead of going down, so right, so from nodes, water goes down, where it goes to a smaller. Now what we can do is we can go to squares that are bigger. So for example, if we have square like 3, 1, 1, um, rather just say 3, 5, 1, and so on. Uh, and then maybe this is like 2, 6, whatever. Um, so because the way it worked the other way, is when water came down, right? So if water comes here, it can, it can go to the Pacific. But now if we're coming from the Pacific Ocean, that means the cells we have to go to would be in, a, would be in an increasing order. So we can go this way, but we can't go something like this, right? We can't go one to two to one. And that would make sense because if we did, if water, rain did come down here, it would never be able to come this way. So we're kind of doing the reverse. So normally we're trying to figure out how does it come down to a smaller number? Well, if we start at the oceans themselves, now it's, how does it go up to a bigger number? And so what we can do is we can figure out, okay, let's just look at these cells. Let's look at these cells and these cells. And let's just do a DFS from all these cells to every single cell that we can go to from the Pacific Ocean. And then let's do the same thing for the Atlantic Ocean. And then we can just store, we can just store these in two different sets. So we'll call it set P maybe, where we have some stuff. And then we have set A, where we have some stuff. And then simply the result is just the union of these two sets, right? Whatever numbers are in both of these. So once we have all the all the um, nodes that are in the Atlantic and the Pacific, meaning that we started at the Atlantic and then we got to the nodes, and we started at the Pacific and we got to the nodes, then we have an answer. So let's try to code that up and let's see what we need. So first we're going to need a set, right, for Atlantic and Pacific. Now we're going to need a DFS function. So let's just say that. And then for the DFS function, uh, let's let's also define rows and columns here as well for the out of bounds situation. So zero. Okay. So DFS. We're going to need. I say need def. We're gonna need a row, we're gonna need a column, and we're also gonna need a Pacific or Atlantic. 
that we need to check which one are we looking at, right? So we're gonna, when we check, did we visit something? It's gonna depend, is it Pacific or Atlantic? So we're actually gonna do that. Because we're gonna, we're gonna traverse, we're gonna do four traversals, right? So we're gonna do one traversal from here, the Pacific that is, starts from this side, Pacific that starts from this side, and then Atlantic that starts from here and Atlantic that starts from here. And then we need to pass in the actual set that we're trying to populate here. And so we, this can just be a string. So let's just call that ocean or something. Okay. And so what's our, what's our um, base case? Well, I think our base case is actually going to be, yeah, so we're actually not going to have a base case, but we're just going to try to visit every single possible location. So we could do that a few ways. Um, we could just return if we're at an invalid index, that would be totally fine. So let's just actually do that, right? So let's just say if, um, so this would be a couple things, right? So if, let's just say we have some invalid index, so that would be one thing. So if row is less than zero, right? Or row is greater than or equal to rows or column is less than zero or column. So we could do the check here or we could do the check in the DFS. It really doesn't matter. Column squared or equal to columns. So what other invalid? So these would be some of the, uh, yeah, so this is the, this is one case. So we can just return here. The other case is we do need to check the ocean type, right? And if it's in there. So if ocean equals, let's just say this is Pacific. And and uh, row column in Pacific. So we just check the ocean and we ask, is it in Pacific? If it is, then we just return here. And then the other return would be if it's in Atlantic, right? And same thing. So if ocean equals Atlantic and row column in Atlantic, we can just straight away return. Okay. Now let's actually add a little bit here. Uh, yeah, let's let's add a little bit here. So we can actually say if it's in Atlantic, otherwise let's actually add it in, right? So Pacific add row home. And we can do the same thing here. We just copy this code. Yep, that would be Atlantic. So. Okay, so we add our we add our uh, whatever we DFS to to the right um to the right set. So now we're done there. Now we do oh so we need one other thing actually as usual in all my DFS stuff we want a directions array right to make it easy to calculate those. So let's do that zero. One, negative one, zero, negative, uh, zero, negative one. Okay, so we have that. So now what we need to do is let's just go through our logic. So if we got to a cell that's out of bounds, we're obviously returning. If we're checking for Pacific and it's already in there, then we're done because we don't want to go to the same cell twice. If we're at Atlantic and it's already in there, we're already done. So now we just have to check in all four directions and we're, and like I said, we don't have to do the check for out of bounds cause that's just gonna, that's just gonna be handled in this once we actually DFS to it. Oh, and we do need to do one more thing. No, we actually did that. We actually already added the, the cell we visited to the appropriate, um, to the appropriate set. So now we literally just need to do directions. So for direction in directions, we can just say n uh, call as usual n row and column equals row plus direction zero. This is the same as in all my other videos. Column plus direction one. Now we just call DFS on it, right? So DFS row column. And we're gonna pass in the same motion type, right? So if we're going through Pacific, we're gonna go to Pacific and so on. And that's gonna be that. So that's our entire DFS. Now remember what we need to do is we're going to check every cell coming from Pacific, let's start out, and then every cell coming from Atlantic. So first we got to check the whole top row, right, for Pacific. Then we got to check the whole left column. 
Then we got to check the bottom row for Atlantic and the bottom column. So let's just do that. So let's do the top and bottom rows first. So let's just say, uh, what's that going to be? So if we are iterating through the row, that means we're going to be actually iterating through each column. So that's going to be for column and rank and range columns. There we go. Important to get this part right. Okay, so we're actually going to be iterating through all these columns and we need to pass in row zero for Pacific. So let's do that. So we need to say DFS row zero, right, column. And we need to pass Pacific here. And then we also need to do Atlantic and Atlantic, we're going to pass in this bottom row, right? So what's the bottom row? Well, that's rows minus one. And we're going to pass in the column. If, uh, this is Atlantic. So now we, we iterated through this top row, we checked for Pacific. We iterated through this bottom row, we checked for Atlantic. Now we need these two columns. So let's do that as well. Now remember, when we're checking for these columns, we're actually iterating through the rows. Like when we're on the specific, this, this is all column zero, but we're iterating through the rows. So it's going to be for row in range rows, DFS. Now it's going to be row column zero for Pacific, right? And then DFS for Atlantic is going to be this thing right here. So that's going to be row. Uh, so the row will change, but the column is going to be columns minus one, right? That's the last column. That's going to be Atlantic. Okay, so now that we have these done, right? So we, we started here, we iterated. Oh, oh, we forgot one thing actually. Hey, we forgot one thing, we forgot one thing. So the problem in our DFS is we are actually going to every single location. And the problem is that, uh, the problem is that we're not actually, remember, like I said, so when we iterate from the numbers, we have to go up and we never checked for that. And so I'm trying to think of where the best place to do that. It would probably be honestly in here. And so we're going to need to edit this code a little. So we could leave these still. One, if we visited before, that's fine. We can definitely, um, we can definitely leave leave this code. But we do need to check if we're out of bounds. And uh, and yeah, so we do need to check if we're out of bounds and if our, and if we are actually allowed to traverse up, right? Because like. If we're at a two, we can go to a three, but we can't go to, like if we're at a three, or let's see here. If we're at a three, we can't go to a two, right? We have to traverse up because it's the reverse of traversing down, right? So if water goes down to the ocean, then from the ocean, we have to go up. So let's do that. So first we have to check if we're out of bounds. So let's just do that here. So this is gonna be N row or N row or N column or N column. So if this is invalid index, instead of returning, let's just continue because we're not going to need to do that. And then we need one more check, right? And so we can do that check in here. And that's just going to be uh, or so that's going to be heights and row and column is less than right we can traverse up or to an equal but we can't have but we can't have we can't traverse down so that's gonna be heights row column and we're gonna clean this up a little because this code is way too long so let's just put these in these and let's make some space in here so we can just do this I think hopefully in Python that's not going to give me any problem. Okay, so now we checked if we're out of bounds or if our new index is less than our old one, which means we don't want to do anything here, which makes sense. Now we do DFS and then this should be fine. Okay, now we need to, so we have these two sets, right? Now we need to have everything that's in both of these sets. Pretty straightforward, so let's just have a res equals, um, I mean, either one's fine. So for 
uh, and then this is going to be just say this is a row column in Pacific if row column in Atlantic this if row column in Pacific if row column in Atlantic um, yeah, then we need to add it to our result and we want to add it with an array. So there's that append like this. So if it's in both and then we just return here, right? Hopefully it's good. Never that easy. I always going to have some errors. Uh, Okay, so we did have some errors here, which is interesting. And then our case two, uh, yeah, so our case two is fine, but we did, we did have some errors here, which is, like I said, interesting. So we actually outputted four zero and oh four, but we missed a lot. So let's let's go through our code here. Okay, so let's see. So we have directions. If ocean is specific, if we are already there, we don't need to do anything. We just return. That makes sense. Else we add it to Pacific. Seems good to me. If ocean is Atlantic, we don't need to traverse anymore. We just return. Okay. Now, new column, row plus direction zero, column plus direction one. That's fine. If N is greater than zero, greater than rows, N is greater than zero, or and columns or heights and row and column is less than heights row column so that means that our new thing is a lower which we can't do yeah that's fine continue okay dfs oh gotcha so this needs to be n row and then we, we, we never actually are traversing to the new ones All right, so let's think of the time and space complexity here. But yeah, hopefully that does make sense to you that for this question, if you just inverse what you want instead of trying to go, trying to go from these cells to the Pacific and to the Atlantic, instead you try to go from these oceans to the cells, it's a lot easier. Okay, so for time, so let's think about this. Our DFS, we're gonna visit every cell at most one time, right? Because we have a visited set, so we're not repeated, we're not doing repeated work. If we did a visit something that we already were at, we just return straight away. Okay, so we're gonna visit every cell once. So that's gonna be N by M, where N, yeah, or M by N, same thing, right? And we're actually gonna, so we are gonna visit, sorry, we are gonna visit cells multiple times, um, but, but the nice thing is, is we're only visiting each cell twice, right? So we're we're traversing, uh, like uh, let me draw this actually. So let's just say this is, and we'll have some cells in here, right? Whatever. Okay. Um. So if this is P P A A, so we're gonna start at these cells, let's say, and we're gonna traverse somewhere, and then when we start at these cells we're not going to traverse the cells we've already visited. So the most we could ever visit for Pacific Ocean is M by N. And same thing for Atlantic. We're going to traverse like this, let's say, but then we're not going to traverse the... So once we did once we did visit the Pacific Ocean, we are going to start over. Like Atlantic is a totally different visited set, but still, once we visit like these, let's say, and there's some other cells, when we visit these, we're not going to go to cells that we've already visited there. So the time complexity is going to be M by N, times two because it's going to be one for Pacific, one for Atlantic, but that just rounds down to M by M. And then space, so we have what's the most, um, for a Pacific we have M by N, and for Atlantic we have N by N, and so that's the same thing. It's going to be two times M by N, but that set rounds down to M by N. Okay, so that's all for this problem. I definitely encourage you to um, code this up, maybe work on it. I think this is a good, good, good problem to practice DFS. Once again, a lot of places you can make errors, so it's good. Definitely will... Um, solidify your foundation in that. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to help grow the channel and I'll see you in the next one.